Welcome back, and I'm so glad you come back, and hello again to our, our, our virtual audience. Um, so, so far, so good. I mean, when you do an event like this, I had over 350 register, and you always wonder, okay, so you get 350, will 200 show up, will 250 show up? Actually, we're over 350 that actually came, so that's kind of like off the charts, which is great. So, um, super stoked because I was saying to someone earlier, when you're doing a reg, you have a list, but it's never real until the real people are in the room. So thank you for coming. We know the real <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, so we'll get started. I'm very pleased to welcome our next guest, uh, Wendy Keene. Um, Wendy has become a friend. It's sort of funny. I reached out to her on LinkedIn last August-ish when her book came out. Uh, we became friends. Her book came out. She shipped a bunch of copies of me to Germany and another place, and I spread them around SAP land. We were friends. Well, since August when we connected. And we finally met first to face, face to face last year when I did a road show in Australia. So the relationships you established are amazing. So Wendy has a book called Strategy to Reality that I brought in 150 copies to share. Wendy will be signing the book at the reception tonight after her Women in Enterprise Architects reception. So all of you women in the crowd, and some guys are welcome too. Um, is on the third floor, we'll be doing at 5.30 to 6.30, a reception inside the reception. So please join Wendy. So without further ado, I'll invite Wendy all the way from Norway to attend this event. So Wendy, welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Paul, and thank you all. It is an honor to be here. So we're going to talk about turning strategy into reality with business architecture. And I've had the great fortune of working with organizations all around the world, from the largest global companies and governments to startups and nonprofits. And I've fallen in love with the idea of how do organizations take really big ideas and turn them into action. But as I've worked with them, no matter the size of the organization, the sector, or the industry, I've observed that most of them are tremendously challenged to execute strategy quickly and well. So that's what we're going to talk about today and how architecture can help. So we'll look at strategy execution as a concept, the challenge and opportunity. We'll look at how architecture and business architecture as the tip of the spear can help. And then we'll talk about so what, now what, how do we move into action on these ideas. So starting with strategy execution. What if you had a magic power? And what if with that power you could take any idea, any thought, any strategy, any transformation and make it real? That would be pretty powerful, wouldn't it? But that's what we do as architects for our organizations. And so I think we're very important leaders to help our organizations do it even better. And it's easy to get distracted and dazzled in our very busy world of global disruption and climate change and AI and all the, the things that are coming at us. But that change is always going to be there. But what I think stays the same and what I think is important for our organizations and institutions to survive and thrive is the ability to change and the ability to adapt. And that's the power that strategy execution, good strategy execution, gives our organizations. But as I said, they're pretty challenged to execute well. And there are statistics that abound in this space. But one I selected here cites that of their sources, strategy implementations fail between 30 to 70 percent. But I find that organizations have almost become used to it. It's like walking with a rock in your shoe, and after a while, you forget it's there, and you just power through. You forget that strategy execution is an issue, and we sort of come to expect these results. And all sorts of challenges show up in execution, like we built the same thing multiple times, or we've created an experience for people that's disconnected and fragmented and, and inconsistent, or the things we've funded and are doing may not be misaligned to our strategy. But those things may show up in execution, they manifest in execution, but they're actually created much further upstream in the strategy execution lifecycle, and we can head them off, spoiler alert, with architecture. 
So why are we so challenged to execute strategy well? I ask myself this all day, every day. I'm, I'm fascinated with it. And there's a lot of reasons that a lot of sources cite, and they're good reasons, from you know, bad strategy to lack of communication of the strategy, leadership, change management, culture, resources, and things like that. But there's four other factors that we don't talk about as much they're all related to a holistic view and holistic thinking, and they're massive blockers. So I'll share those four with you that I see. And the first is we have not necessarily been taught how to do strategy execution. So in 2021, the MBA Roundtable did a research of graduate business curriculums in North America, and it found that very few, I mean very few universities, teach students how to execute strategy. We teach formulation, we teach leadership, we teach you know, all, change management, all these important things, but we don't really teach students how to take formulated strategies and convert those into the portfolio of work that will make it real. So that's, that's one source. Another is that strategy execution, and by that I mean strategy to execution, is often not treated as a formal or cohesive function or process. We don't look at strategy execution as a thing or a very important thing. So it's usually executed in a fragmented way by different teams with you know, fragmented sets of accountabilities and activities. Um, and, and even different KPIs and motivators for those different teams. Strategy is often translated in silos, which is how you get the bubbles, those challenges I shared on the last slide, and our business knowledge base to underpin our decisions holistically from strategy to execution has not been complete enough. And of course, that is where the architecture comes in. So, I often consider that there are many strategic management frameworks. We've also globally invested um, just tremendously in agile methods, which both of those are, are important. But they focus upstream and downstream in strategy execution. And there's still a gap there in the middle to be bridged. And that's the, the, the gap that we can, we can help our organizations to bridge. So what is successful strategy execution? It is the ability to define clear strategic intent because it starts there. We can't build unless we have clear strategic intent. And then being able to translate it into organized effort across people, process, information, and technology. And we know for a large organization that this is no small feat. And being able to do that with transparency and accountability for the value and the outcomes delivered, uh, and intentional change management and care for the people all along the way. So the key is for organizations to build a cohesive, a multidisciplinary, and an end-to-end -end capability or a muscle for strategy execution, the muscle for change. And to treat strategy execution as a crucial function, important as any other, like sales, like marketing, like customer care, like human resources, like finance. It's a thing, and it's critical to the survival uh, in our organizations thriving today and tomorrow. And of course, the reason why that's important is I like to say organizations must do change well. Because we all have this massive funnel of direction. It's strategies, transformations, regulatory changes. What are we going to do about AI, maybe acquisitions? And all of that business direction is going to make change to our organization and change, and change to many of the same parts of the organization. <clears throat> and all that change needs to be defined, designed, planned and executed using a finite set of resources, a finite set of talent, and a finite set of budget. So now let's look at how we turn strategy into reality with business architecture at a high level. But before we do that, I'll just give you a few headlines around the discipline of, of business architecture. So 
Business architecture as a discipline has grown up a lot over the years. It's really come into its own. It's evolved, it's formalized. And so the first headline is that the components of business architecture, the scope of it has expanded and formalized. So business architecture isn't one or two things, it's 10 things, right? And the view I have there is from the BizBoc guide, it's the business architecture body of knowledge. At the heart, we have capabilities and value streams that connect to other things like strategies, initiatives, products, policies, and of course, focal points from other disciplines like IT architecture, human-centered design, and so on. Business architecture in its evolution has also become higher level in its elevation. It's the forest, not the trees. But that forest does connect to the trees, to the systems, to the processes, to the, to the details of the organization. And a business architecture is a holistic view of an entire organization and the ecosystem in which it operates. It's a refreshing view of the whole. And it is, or should be, business owned and business driven. And following along with that, business architecture has become a strategic business discipline with one foot as part of the enterprise architecture umbrella, undoubtedly, but the other foot is standing in another world and that world is strategic planning, which also means that people in strategy and transformation and strategic planning are more than ever using the business architecture to support strategy execution and other decision making. And that's good news, that's good news for all of us. So the role of business architecture in strategy execution is, it's our business blueprint, as we know. And the role of any blueprint, whether for a house or a product, is to create common understanding and to activate change. Two sides there. And in strategy and transformation, business architecture helps us to understand where are we, where are we going, and how are we gonna get there? And with that blueprint of the business, it helps us to think differently, especially because it's a view of the whole. So we're used to interacting with business architecture through the blueprints, right? Through the views, capability models, or value streams, or composite views, or business model canvases. Um, and those are wonderful because they give us a, a, you know, canvases for design of our organizations. But as alluded to earlier, right? Business architecture and all of enterprise architecture is also data, and that's where the power lies. Um, I marvel that we have data for everything and everyone, except for what our organizations do from a holistic perspective. So that's what we can bring with architecture. And at the heart of the business architecture are two modular building blocks capabilities, but also value streams and value streams will reuse capabilities to deliver value to internal and external stakeholders. So the bottom line is really this. Business and enterprise architecture enable strategy, execution, agility. And we do that from two different perspectives. The first is through intentional design. We don't do a lot of intentional macro level design of our organizations. But business architecture, like I said, gives us those frameworks, those canvases to design and redesign for transformation or digital or sustainability or new strategies and in, in business models. And we design around the reusable components of capabilities and value streams. And those same reusable components give us a structure for business ownership that transcends, that transcends silos, that transcends business units. On the other side, so with intentional design, we get agility from having a streamlined organization so that when it comes time to change, it's simpler and faster. But the other side is through translating change. And here, architecture gives us the knowledge base to inform and translate strategy and to keep it aligned on an ongoing basis with execution and to inform investment decisions with, a, with an enterprise lens. Without architecture, our organizations can't do these things. With architecture, we can address the root causes, particularly the four that I talked about earlier. 
So strategy execution has become the primary value proposition for business architecture over the years. And it's continuing to gain traction worldwide in organizations, in architecture professional associations, and increasingly in higher education. So I'm going to pull that thread of translating change a little bit. And then I'll give you just a real quick example of each of these in action for a company. So as I said, architecture bridges strategy and execution. I just have a macro level view of strategy to execution here. I'm not implying waterfall or anything like that, to be clear. But what most organizations do, that I see anyway, is we go from the big ideas in stage one, our strategies, and we respond, we jump to stage three and respond with a laundry list of initiatives, or even worse, uh, jump to stage four and start creating solutions to try to carry out that strategy. And when we do that, it is there, it is by skipping over or not having a stage two that those downstream execution challenges are created. So said another way, having the stage two gives us an opportunity to architect change together, to look at that funnel of things coming in and understand what does that mean collectively to our business and how do we shape work in the smartest way. So the role of architecture in strategy execution is two things. It's one, to uniquely inform, translate strategy, shape work up front. Secondly, it gives us a golden thread to tie strategy to architecture to execution. This is what I call the golden thread. And you'll remember I said earlier it takes two key things to execute strategy well. Clear intent translated into organized effort. So the clear intent comes in those blue columns where we are diligent about unpacking our strategies into common, clear, consistent focal points and then not jumping to initiatives, but the key addition and the game changer, I know it doesn't look like much, but the game changer is adding those two green columns that value streaming capability to understand our objectives, our courses of action, all that direction, what value streams are they going to impact and what capabilities are they going to impact? Because capabilities and value streams are going to frame where the change is happening. We know there's a lot of detail behind that of the people process, the information, the technology. But with the capabilities and value streams, we can connect the dots with all the other things in the organization that are impacting the, the same parts of the business. So capabilities coordinate change, essentially. And without capabilities, we have business direction and a lot of actions, all right? a lot of things we're trying to do. And to the best of our ability, we of course try to coordinate, but it's a big cognitive load and it's too much to get our head around. So the alternative and the mindset shift is to take that same set of direction and understand what it means to capabilities, which capabilities need to be enhanced and invested to carry that direction out. And then we wrap the work, we wrap the initiatives around that. And you can also have business ownership around those capabilities as well. So this represents a big mindset shift from having business direction and responding with a laundry list of initiatives to having business direction and building strategic capabilities for an organization for today and tomorrow. And that golden thread gives us this continual response mechanism. I picture organizations as sort of a living organism, right? Sort of flexing with change as they respond to their environment. And so when strategy changes or something in the world requires us to react, we can understand immediately what does that mean to the architecture and what does that mean to the execution and the portfolio of work that's executing and methodically identify what should we be doing, what should we stop doing, what needs to change. And of course, execution feeds back to strategy and this happens again and again. This is our muscle to change. So just to give you a, a really quick example here, this is from a Fortune 500 company. And this particular company was transforming the entire enterprise around customer experience. So what that looked like is actually many different transformations that were uh, very closely knit together. 
And this particular transformation, which I won't go into details, but it's around customer communications. And the takeaway is that they're actually designing the current state and the target state around capabilities and value streams with the IT architecture overlays to it and ties to, to the journeys as well. And the strategic roadmap is also oriented around capabilities. So the, you know, the initiatives that we're defining aren't just listed you know, system by system. They're organized around the capabilities we're going to be maturing and delivering enhancements to over time, which, again, allows for business ownership and uh, better tracking of what we're actually getting and harmonizing people people, process, and technology changes across all of those. So with that as a tiny microcosm, this is the rest of the picture. I call it architecting the cube. So on the left-hand side, you can see there are multiple different capabilities. Those are all enterprise-wide transformations. And the capability teams are responsible for delivering readily, you know, readily usable capabilities, people, process, technology. The value stream teams are responsible for uh, ensuring that value streams, processes, and experiences are unified across business units and products and channels. Uh, and of course, the value streams are going to use the, the, the capabilities. So these teams all work together, their roadmaps harmonize, their target states harmonize. Each of the teams have a set of business and IT architects and an executive sponsor. And there is a set of executives, a customer experience leadership council that is responsible and accountable for everything that you see here, for basically the driving the customer experience for the organization. So they are deciding the investment in the direction and they're using the capabilities and value streams as the organizing construct. So Gartner talks about the composable enterprise. I think this is a really good real life example of what that can look like, at least from the business architecture perspective. So there's a much bigger picture here, and I'm not meaning to paint, ar paint architecture as you know, the white horse or the silver bullet, even though it plays a tremendously important role and an often missing one, but strategy execution takes a village. And this is the other part of what it means to do comprehensive strategy execution. It's looking at that end-to-end -end process and how all the teams work together hand-in-hand -hand to get idea into action or strategy into reality. And there's, of course, a very important trifecta Right? And many of the perspectives we're focused on here today, the, the, you know, the business and the enterprise architecture in the process. And of course, we need to be integrated with each other uh, and the rest of those teams. So how do we move into action on some of these ideas? So what and now what? I hope the so what is obvious. Uh, the so what is that architecture has renewed strategic relevance. Right, refreshed, particularly as organizations are, are, are hungry to, to do better strategy execution. It's becoming a, a, a higher priority on the business agenda. And as business architecture moves upstream, so does all of architecture move upstream, which also means we can be at the table for the conversations to help shape direction and shape work instead of receiving it downstream and trying to, to course correct certain things. And just these ideas we've talked about, it creates a new mindset, a new organizational readiness for others and the organization to think holistically and see the world like we do, um, so that they, it paves the way for architectural thinking as well. So now what? This is most certainly a journey. And I really like what, um, what Rishad said before. If you're not solving for the people, you're not solving for anything. And that is exactly true here. This journey is a human journey. It is more about the people than it is ever about the architecture. It's entirely about change and new ways of working, thinking about comprehensive strategy execution and holistic views and design, right? That is new ways of thinking and working. And even if you have you know, amazing sponsorship from the top level, from, from the C-suite, still, we have a whole organization of people to change. So the only way to the top is one person, one step, and one win at a time. So some good places to start is through the strategy execution lens. How well is strategy execution working in your organization? Are you getting the outcomes that you would like to see? What opportunities do you have? 
and then start conversations with your peers, with your leaders, and create an intolerance for status quo. Remember that people are walking with this little rock in their shoe. They, they've come to accept these results, so you have to sort of draw attention to the art of the possible and what can be, and build a case for change, for comprehensive strategy execution and intentional modular business design. And then you start making progress, one person, one step, one win at a time, show people what it looks like, build advocates, do bigger things over time. Two really good places to start are, one, take a one golden thread, translate one strategy or one you know, transformation all the way through so people can see it. And another good one is to put a capability lens on the investment portfolio. Of course, you need a business architecture to do this. Uh, there'll be more sessions that talk about that, but we need an enterprise view of capabilities, enterprise view of value streams, and the, the cross mapping between the two. But once you have that, everything else can be done just enough, just in time. And of course, partnerships is tremendously important uh, between the trifecta that I talked about and all of those other teams. So of course, the idea of comprehensive strategy execution, it needs to be led and driven by the business. And this is where I spend most of my days, working with business leaders and business teams and higher education. However, it's like building a railroad, right? And you're building the tracks towards each other. That's what we're doing. And the people in the, this room understand this, you see this, you live this, and you can be an advocate for change. Your voice, your action, and your leadership matter so much. Because together, we are creating a new reality. We're creating a new future of new ways of thinking and working powered by architecture. So with that, I look forward to continuing the conversation with uh, any of you throughout the week. And back over to you. Thank you very much, Wayne. Great. Thank you. So, awesome. No, a couple quick things. So another area that Wendy is incredibly passionate about is helping women in architecture. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be chatting about it at the, the reception tonight, but just a bit of a, frame it a little bit for our audience in terms of what you're doing with women in architecture, because what we're going to look to do as a community is a collaboration between our enterprise architect SAP community and some of Wendy's efforts in the broader women in, in architecture. Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, of course the idea is there is power in diversity and, um, you know, about 13% of, of this room, I guess, is, is evident. About 13% of, of enterprise architects are women. So we believe uh, architecture has never been more important. We need all of us and all of us at our, our best individually and together. So um, Women in Architecture is a, a global initiative. I'm a co-founder and chair of that. And we're really looking to change that through community and interventions and in support of companies. So uh, it's named after the collective cause, which is more women in architecture, which means it's about all of us, right? Men and women working towards a, a more diverse architecture. Thank you. And we all know what's coming next, right? <laughs> okay. Awesome. Cool. This is a bit of your stand-up break. Okay. Where, do I stand here with you? Yes. Ooh, this is cool. You folks are getting good at it, by the way. <laughs> Down a little tight, tight. Tight, yeah. All right, here we go. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Wendy, and thank you, everybody. Thank you.